This question here is taking a very long way to try to demonstrate to you what a confidence interval is. Let's read the question and I'll explain what it means. So there's a blind taste test between two colas, brand A or B, and uh, the results of the test indicate that 58 of 100 prefer brand A. And we're going to do a hypothesis test for these various uh, levels of P0. So P0 is, is the assumption of the preference that we had. So let's say this was a cola that we uh, had last year and uh, 0.47 is our P0. That means last year when we did this test, 47% of people liked uh, brand A versus brand B. And let's say brand A has done something to change the formula for their cola. And now this test, of course, shows, shows that there's now 58 out of 100 or 58% of people like brand A. So is that statistically significant? That's what we want to understand here. Is is that a big big enough difference that we would say, wow, yeah, that, that cola is a lot better. Uh, and we're going to test that against 0.47, and then we're going to test against 0.48, and then 0.49, and go all the way up to 0.69. So in other words, if you were trying to hand do this calculation, you would have to do it 23 times and calculate the results. So we're obviously going to use technology. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And Excel is the preferred way here. So let me show you. We got, I can show you the calculator as well, but it's going to be a little bit more manual. So here's my Excel workbook. So the first thing I'm going to put in is right here we have 58 people uh, like brand A. We had 100 people total that we asked. All right, and we're going to test that against, and I'm going to make in the column here that says 0 0.47. Now the thing we need right here is the formula to calculate the z-score for a proportion. Let me go pull up the formula sheet and I'm going to show you that formula. So if you come out here to my website, uh, this is just wanted to show you really quickly where to get the formula sheet. If you come and go to my statistics page and you scroll down, uh, this is where you can get the formula sheet. And so we're going to scroll through the formula sheet here and look for that formula. And we're in chapter 10. Uh, so the test statistic that we want is Z0 equals P hat minus P0 over the square root of P0. Uh, blah blah blah. So let me go get a screen snip of that. So there's my formula. We're going to take p hat. Now my p hat is my 58 out of 100. So I'm going to type right here equals, and I'm going to put a parenthesis to start. Equals parentheses uh, 58. So click on 58 divided by, and then click on 100. That'll give you p hat. And then we're going to subtract p naught, and p naught is our 0.47. Then we're going to close those parentheses, and then we're going to divide by, and to do the square root in Excel, you type SQRT, and then open parentheses, and we're going to take P0, which is 0 0.7, times, and then new parentheses, 1 minus P0, which is 1 minus 0 0.47, close parentheses, and then divide by N, and N was 100 and then close the parentheses. So be careful there with the parentheses. You see I, I, I had to nest some parentheses inside of the other parentheses. And so we get that number there. Now we want to continue that number down. And so what you need to do is tell Excel here that this is 0.48 and 0.49. And here's a little Excel trick for you. If you highlight three cells that are showing a trend that those numbers are going up by 0.01 every time, I like those three, then grab the corner, and we're going to go all the way down to 0.67, I believe it was. And my mistake, it was 0.69, so we're going to go on down two more to 0.69. And now what we want to do is in this formula here, I want the purple cell to move as we go down, but the number 58 and 100 need to stay where they are. So everywhere you have an A1 or A2, we put a dollar sign in front of the one that says, hey, stay stuck on row one. And I want you, A2, to stay stuck on row 2. And I want you, A2, also to stay stuck on row 2. And now when you do this thing right here, you can, since you've created a column here, you can double click right there with, when you get that black plus. And it will fill in all those calculations. And you see how all the way down, the only number in the formula that changes is that number there, the C3, C3, C3. But the A1 and A2 stay put. That's what the dollar sign does. So I reopened the formula sheet here, and I've scrolled down to the sixth page. So again, just to show you where we were earlier, we were up here uh, looking at that test statistic for chapter 10. If you scroll down a little bit further, you get to the Z tables. 
the reason I like to go here is because we're doing a hypothesis test and we have a level of significance of 0 0.05 and for a proportion test the critical value is plus or minus 1.96 so we have two things going on here I need to explain remember if the p-value is less than 0 0.05 you say yes it is a statistically significant result or alternatively you can say if your z is higher than this 1.96 number then that is also statistically significant there is a calculation here to get 0 0.05 or to get uh, sorry a p-value I really don't want to get into that because it's, it's kind of complicated to explain so what we're looking for here is when is for what numbers is this value greater than 1.96 positive or negative and we see right there those two I'll highlight them those two the z-score is greater than 1.96 here it's not and just notice uh, kind of interesting right here the result if if you thought the percentage was 58 and it of course turned out to be 58 you see this critical value is zero because you got the exact same result that you expected uh, scroll on down and we're looking for things greater than negative 1.96 in a negative sense and you see the two at the bottom are greater than 1.96 in a negative sense. So the answer to part A is going to be on the top end 0 0.67 and on the bottom end 0 0.49. So 0 0.49 to 0 0.67. What that means is, is that if you find that 58 out of 100 people preferred brand A but you thought it was either 47 or 48 or you thought it was 68 or 69 before there's something that has changed in brand A if you thought it was 0.69 you changed brand A and you did something bad because people don't like it as much as they used to likewise if it was 0.47 and now it's 58 that means you did something really good you've made a, uh, a significant difference so now we're going to construct a 95 percent confidence interval and this is where I want to use the calculator and so before I get too far, I do want to show you how to do what we just did uh, using the calculator. You will have to do the calculation 23 times. Uh, but if you click stat and you go over to tests, and we're going to go down and do a one proportion Z test. And so our P naught for the first one is 0 0.47. Our X was 58 out of 100. And we're going to do the where proportion is not equal to P naught. Leave that as it is and do calculate. You see we get that same z-score of 2.20 and now you see the p-value is reported here and that p-value is less than the, uh, the significance level of 0 0.05. So 0.47 you would reject the null hypothesis for that and then you would have to continually test that. Click stat tests, go down to one prop z-test, change 47 to 48, go down and calculate again. And now you see the p-value is 0 0.04, still less. Click stat again and this, I'm going to just do it one more time to show you that if you go to 0.49, finally the p-value will be greater than 0.05. So 0.49, you cannot reject that null hypothesis at 0.49. It's the first time you can't. And if you go up to the top end, 0.67 is the last time you cannot. And then at 0.68, you could. So now we're going to do a confidence interval uh, for this. So let me clear out of this screen. So you click stat again and go over to tests and we'll scroll down the list and we're going to do a one prop z interval and it's already populated the numbers that we had uh, 58 out of 100 and the confidence level is 95 percent so we'll leave that at 0.95 and then we're going to click calculate and so the lower bound it wants it to three decimals so that's just 0.483 and the upper bound is 0.677 we'll round that up so 0 0.483 to 0 0.677. So let's talk about that. what that means. That lower bound is 0.483 and the upper bound is 0.677. Essentially, a confidence interval and a hypothesis test are, are completely correlated. All right. So if we have a 95% confidence interval, that's the exact same as an alpha of 0 0.05 level of significance in a hypothesis test. It's saying that 95% of the values are between 0.483 up to 0.677. If you get outside of those numbers, then you're in the alpha zone. You're in the level of significance. And that's why up here, 0.47, 
and 0.48, those two numbers right there, those were not part of this range. And then as soon as you got greater than 0.677, so 0.68 and 0.69, those numbers are not part of that confidence interval. So therefore, those are values for which you would reject uh, the null hypothesis. So as long as you're either inside the confidence interval between 483 to 677, you also cannot reject the null hypothesis for values in that zone. So that's what A and, a and B are trying to teach us here, is to understand that there is this correlation between confidence interval and hypothesis testing. Now the final step, part C here, let's say you change the level of significance to alpha equals 0.01. What you're doing is you're making it more stringent. You're making it more difficult because the p-values, even for 0.47, were not less than 0.01. What happens is when you increase alpha, your confidence interval is going to get wider and wider. All right. So if, if you want to be 99.9% .9 sure about, say, an election uh, result, and uh, you would you would give a very wide range. I think somewhere between 30% to 80% of people voted for this candidate. And that's not very helpful, but that's the only way you can be 99.99% .99 sure. If you only want to be 50% sure, then you could say, I think it's between 47 and 49, you know, or some other number, right? So when you're less confident or your confidence interval is, confidence interval is smaller, uh, you're less confident in results, but the range of values decreases. In this case, since we're trying to be more stringent, we want to be 99% sure, right? An alpha of 0 0.01 is like a 99% confidence interval. What happens here is we say the range of values would increase because the corresponding current confidence interval would also increase in size. So the more sure you want to be of something, the wider your range has to be. And that's what part uh, C is trying to get us to understand. So th this is kind of a complicated question, and it just wants to make sure you understand there's a linkage between hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. And uh, I hope I've made the situation a little bit more clear. This is one of those things when I teach it in class. Uh, we have a lot of discussion about this, and uh, I can go into a lot more detail about it. Uh, I'm hoping you, you can understand this uh, from this explanation in this video. That's why this video runs a little bit long. But if not, definitely email me, uh, text me and I can maybe help shed some more light on it.